Yes, sir. I can see it. Clearly. Okay. Okay, good. So uh, today we are going to read a, a new drama. Not new. New in the session that we are going to start this drama in today's class. And this drama is written by Tofik Al Hakim. And the name of the drama is The Fate of a Cockroach. Okay. Everybody can hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, uh, Jara Pode join Kurbin, Tara automatically join Kurte Barbin, Kuno Shamoshani, I'm writer Shurukuri. Okay. So um, I, I, I have I sent you the reading materials. Have you got that? Everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so uh, the title of today's drama, that is The Fate of a Cockroach. And this drama is written by Tofik Al Hakim. So what we do in every class, naturally, before going to the drama, we discuss the biography of the artist or the writer or the playwright. Okay, so in this regard, we will be discussing about the biography of uh, Tofik Al Hakim. So he was born in, in October 9, 1898, and he was died in 26th July, 1987. So 20th century world drama in this regard. He is a 20th century writer, and he is a prominent Egyptian writer and a visionary writer. And he is one of the writer who pioneered the Arabic novel and drama in the history of English literature or the Arabic literature. And the triumphs and failures that are represented by the reception of his enormous output of plays are emblematic of the issues that have confronted the Egyptian drama genre as it has endeavored to adapt adapt its complex mood of communication to Egyptian society. So Tawfiq Al-Hakim is an Egyptian dramatist, and especially he played a vital role for changing the tradition of uh, uh, Egyptian drama or the Arabic drama. And Tawfiq Al-Hakim was born on October 9, 1898, in Alexandria. Okay. Alexandria, Egypt, uh, to an Egyptian father and a Turkish mother. His father, a wealthy and illustrious, illustrious civil officer, worked as a judge in the judiciary in the village of uh, Al Del Nigate in central. Uh, Beheria province. His mother was a daughter of a retired Turkish officer. So his father was uh, uh, Egyptian, but his mother was a Turkish from family inheritance. Tofik Al Hakim enrolled at a Damanpur primary school at the age of seven. So naturally, what we do at the early age, he got himself admitted in a primary school. He left primary school in 1915 and his father put him in a public school in the Beheria province and where Tawfiq Al-Hakim finished secondary school. However, due to the lack of proper secondary schooling in the Hi, province... I'm waiting room. Uh, pardon? Approach maybe in waiting room. Approach. Uh, but I don't see the notification. Naturally, if anybody waits in the waiting room, I will get notification, but I haven't, I'm not getting that. I think she is trying the old room number. Hmm? I think she is trying the old room number. Old room number. Yes. That means old session ID. Yes. But uh, but the session ID is the same. Uh, no, no, no. It's the same session ID. No, no, no. Not session. Session ID is not the same. Okay, okay. Uh, the, the ID will be the different, but. Uh, I just gave her the new ID. 
Uh, but she still says that she cannot enter. Ah. Uh, uh, now, now he has got. Okay. Approach. Hmm. Hello, approach. Sir, assalamualaikum. Alright, salam. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Actually, we had been discussing the biography of Tofik Al Hakim. Most probably, you have got the reading materials uh, early, yes, in the, early in the morning. So we are discussing about that. And uh, Tofik Al Hakim, what happened to that? It is a new. Ajmer Jahan Roshni. Okay. As Roshni is entered. Most probably he is trying. She is trying. Okay. So, however, due to the lack of proper secondary schooling in the province, that means where Tofik Al Hakim was born, there was a lack of secondary school. He moved to Cairo with his uncles to continue his studies at Muhammad Ali secondary school and after studying in Cairo he moved to Paris where he graduated in law and began preparing a PhD thesis at the uh, uh, Sorbonne Sorbonne in Cairo however his attention turned increasingly to the Paris theaters and the opera and after three years in Paris, he abandoned his studies and returned to Egypt in 1928, full of ideas for transforming Egyptian theater. So um, he went to Cairo and he studied PhD over there. And after that, he returned again in Egypt because Hakim, Tufik al Hakim, had a desire to transform the Arabic theater or the Egyptian theater. He had a desire, but he studied in uh, uh, the different subject, that means law. He studied law, but by studying law, he had a desire to change the Arabic theater that we have got by the enormous body of work or enormous body of write-up that Tawfiq al-Hakim gave to the history of drama and uh, Egyptian drama before Tawfiq al-Hakim, what was the condition of Egyptian drama? We, we can have a glimpse of this. The cause of serious drama, at least in its textual form, was the process of being given a boast by one of the Egyptian greatest literators, Ahmed Shoki. Ahmed Shoki, before Tawfiq al Hakim, there was a great dramatist of Egyptian drama. His name was Ahmed Shoki, and prince of poets, who during his later years, paint a number of verse drama with themes culled from Egyptian and Islamic history. This included Masra, uh, we should read the English name, the death of Cleopatra, 1929, driven mad by Lila, 1931, the Andal Andalusian princess, 1932, and 18th century ruler of Egypt and a play originally written in 1893 and later revised. So Ahmed Shoki, 
a dramatist of Egypt, he wrote this drama before Tawfiq al-Hakim. However, between the popular tradition of farcical comedy and melodrama, the performance of translation version of European dramatic masterpieces, there still remained a void within which an indigenous tradition of serious drama could develop and the stage of anything. So there was a European form of transformation of drama that was a crying need. That means there was a leakage or lack of traditional European drama we didn't, we notice in the history of Egyptian drama before Tufik al Hakim's writing. Though we have a dramatist named Ahmed Shaki in Egyptian drama, an Egyptian dramatist. And during World War II, Al Hakim published many articles against Nazism and fascism. Okay, so when uh, the Second World War, as we have learned, that um, uh, 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 Tawfiq Al Hakim was born and then he graduated in 19, uh, uh, graduated and he got his PhD in 1928. And for this reason, the time of the Second World War create a great um, mental uh, mental uh, shuffle in Tawfiq Al Hakim. And uh, during the Second World War, so Hakim published many articles against Nazism and fascism. And the, the articles portrayed Hitler as a demon whose victory would herald the end of human civilization, bringing instead a turn of barbarism and, and uh, tribalism and beastliness. So Tawfiq al-Hakim wrote many articles, literary articles against Hitler and fascism and Nazism. And that also gave us the idea that Tawfiq al-Hakim abhorred fascism and who uh, hates fascism, of course he will in love of democratic chill or democratic ideas. So this is Tawfiq al-Hakim. And after that, he published many plays. One of them, that is The People of the Cape in 1933 was a significant event in Egyptian drama. So the, the drama, that is The People of the Cape, 1993. The history of the people of the Cape is to be found in the 18th surah of the Quran, as well as in other sources. It concerns the tale of a seven sleepers of Euphus who order to escape the Roman persecution of Christian, take refuge in a cave. So you know the history, that is the Euphus's history, the seven sleepers, they went to a land and they uh, to avoid the persecution, they re remained over there. And after 300 years sleep, they got up, uh, got up from sleep and saw a massive change in the realization of the country. So based on the Euphus's Euphysius meet the uh, this play that means the people of the Cape was written by uh, uh, Tawfiq Al Hakim, and another one within a year Al Hakim produced another major and highly uh, reverent work that is uh, Iske Herald's 1934. This is another drama, or Shah Shah Rejat Shah Rejat. Uh, it's his Arabic name, but English name, both name are very tough to pronounce. Anyway, so Sera Jade. So anyway, so this is the second drama written by Tawfiq al Hakam and it was published in 1934. While the title character, of course, the famous narrator of the 1001 Nights Connection. And the scenario of this play is set after all the tales have been told. Okay, so now cute of his vicious anger against the female sex by the storytelling uh, um, virtue, virtuosity of the women who is now his wife, King Shahriar abandons his previous ways and embarks on a journey in the quest of knowledge. Actually. Um, we will we will know later. That means the 
uh, main character of this drama that is uh, uh, the, the the main character uh, is against uh, female sex and uh, and for his hatred against female sex he is very much involved in the persuasive knowledge or in the persuasion of knowledge so he one hand the narrator or the main character hates female sex in another way he loves knowledge the same scenario we will see in the drama we are going to um, read uh, this that is the fate of a cockroach so we will say let's see the same just one second Sorry for the interruption. So this is the second drama written by Tofik Al Hakim, and there you see the chief character that um, is against the female sex. So in such a way, Tofik Al Hakim wrote many drama. Even uh, though the play is now considered one of the finest works, uh, Taha Hossein, a prominent Arab writer and one of the leading intellectuals of the of the then Egypt, criticized some of its aspect mainly that it was not suitable for a theatrical performance. This is about his second drama. Later, the two writers uh, wrote together a novel called Al Qasr Al Mashur in 1936, in which both authors revisited some of the themes from Al Hakim's play. When the National Theatre Troupe was uh, formed in Egypt in 1935, the first production that it mounted was the people of the cave. That means the first drama detailed by Tofik Al Hakim that was written in 1932. The performance were not a success. Uh, for one thing, audiences seemed unimpressed by a performance in which the action on stage was so limited in comparison with the more popular types of drama. So the first performance of the, the people of the Cape was not a success. It was such problems in the realm of both production and reception that seemed to have led Al Hakim to use some of his play uh, prefaces in order to develop the notion of his plays as a theater des uh, ideas, works for the reading rather than performance. So uh, in, in case of um, Al Hakim's theater, when he got negative review for the first performance of the people of the cave, then he introduced a technique that means at the very start of the play, he, uh, uh, someone will be read out the theme or aspects uh, of the play, what is going to happen. This introduced by Tofik Al Hakim in the tradition of Arabic drama. However, in spite of such critical controversies, he continued to write plays with philosophical themes called from a variety of cultural sources. So next time, uh, Tofik Al Hakim started writing plays based on the philosophical themes and the cultural themes. And one of the famous it is that is Pygmalion, 1942, an interesting blend of the legend of Pygmalion and Narcissus. So this is another drama based on the philosophical theme written by Tofik Al Hakim. So some of all Hakim's frustration with the performance uh, aspect were diverted by an invitation of 1949 to write a series of short plays for publication in newspaper article. So in 1945, he got invitation to write some series of short drama or short articles for the newspaper. He went over there and these works were gathered together into two collection. So Masha Al Magtama, that means Theater of Society, 1950, and Al Masha Al Munawa, the Theater of 
theater miscellany 1956 so in 10 years time he got two collection of drama the most memorable of this play is, is uh, death song and one act play that with masterly economy depicts the fraught atmosphere in upper egypt as a family awaits to return of the eldest son so this death song the play based on the um, uh, the, the 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 atmosphere of upper class society of arab or egypt okay and in that in that uh, drama we will see that a family waits for the return of the eldest son and in in order that they may carry out a murder in response to the expectation of a blood feud so this is the incident that happened in the aristocratic society of egypt at that time this drama death song is based upon that um, situation uh, that were occurring in the upper class society in Egypt. And so Al Hakim response to the social transformation um, brought about by the 1952 revolution, which he later criticized. Uh, was the play Al Yudi Al uh, Naima, Soft 19, uh, 1954. So uh, there was a revolution. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, the Egyptian revolution. The, the, the Al Hakim's drama got a new shape after Egyptian revolution. What is the Egyptian revolution? So this Egyptian revolution occurred in 1952 also known as 1952 revolution or 23rd July revolution began on 23rd July 1952 by the free officers movement, a group of army officers led by Muhammad Nagib and Golam Abdel Nasser. So uh, that is a free movement by uh, guided by two leaders, Muhammad Nagib and Golam Abdel Nasser. So that was the revolution. And the revolution was initially aimed at overthrowing King Farouk. So 1952, before 1952, there was a king and his name was King Farouk. So this King Farouk was overthrown by the revolution, um, by, a revol by a revolution that was gathered by two influential leaders, that means Golam Nakib and Golab Amdan Nasser. Okay. So after that revolution, the drama shaped a new uh, uh, new horizon. Uh, why? So we can go back. Uh, I don't know whether it is here or not. So uh, at the time of uh, Nasser, if I see the slide is there or not. We are waiting for a notes that is the what happened after 1952 revolution in Egypt. So I got that, but whether it is okay. Uh,
can you see this slide uh, arif yes sir the history yes, of, we can see okay the history of egypt yes, under gulam abdel nasser have you got this okay yes okay so um, we have uh, got a point that after 1952 revolution gulam abdel nasser and another one uh, gulam nakib they initiated the revolution so king farooq was overthrown and uh, that came in power so the history of egypt under gulam abdel nasser covers the period of egyptian history from the egyptian revolution 1952 that means after 1952 gulam abdel nasser came to the power of egyptian of which gulam abdel nasser was one of the two principal leaders spanning nasser's presidency and nasser's presidency of egypt from 1956 to his death in 1970 so nasser's tenure as egypt egypt's uh, tenure at egypt's leader heralded a new period of modernism and socialist reform in egypt and a staunch advocacy of pan arabic pan arab nationalism including a short lived uh, union with syria and developing world solidarity and blah so after 1952 revolution in uh, egypt uh, nasser abdel um, gulam abdel nasser became the president of egypt in 1956 and at that time egypt went towards modernism and they grew a uh, modernity and fraternity and solidarity among the other arab countries okay got the point so this is his prestige uh, in egypt and throughout the arab world soared in the wake of his nationalism and of the suez canal in 1956 and also another prestige that is the suez uh, canal and egypt's political victory is a subsequent three party uh, aggression but was uh, damped badly by israel's successful invasion and occupation of egyptian and arab territory in the six day war in 1967 so this uh, country egypt went towards modern uh, towards uh, modernism at the time of nasser uh, golam abdel nasser but the era is regarded a time where the ordinary citizen uh, look here the t this era okay so in this time you see that the era that means this era that means 1956 to uh, 1970 this era is regarded as a time where ordinary citizen enjoyed unprecedented access to housing education jobs health service nourishment as well as other as well as um, other forms of social welfare while aristocratic influence went okay so in one hand so this era create a great um, as we uh, as we have learned that after 1932 tofik al hakim turned towards the philosophical theme uh, drama uh, turn to write drama based on philosophical themes and after 1952 revolution then means all classes of people enjoyed unprecedented freedom in terms of housing education health and other sectors and especially the dominance over uh, the dominance over the lower class people by the upper class people was went that means the aristocratic people could not play the vital role in the society at the time and the national economy economy grew significantly through agrarian reform major modern modernization uh, project such as uh, hello one still works and assam uh, drum 
and nationalization schemes such as the Swiss Canal. However, the substantial economic growth that marked the early 1960s took a downturn to the remainder of the decade, only uh, covering in 1970. During Nasser's time, the office Egypt experienced a golden age of culture. Another thing, apart from the unprecedented uh, opportunity for the thing, you see another thing that means during Nasser's time in office, Egypt experienced a golden age of culture, particularly in theater, film, poetry, television, radio, literature, fine arts, comedy, and music. So that was a tremendous contribution of Nasser in the history of Egypt. So Egypt under Nasser dominates the Arab world in these fields, producing singers such as Abdul Halim Hafez, Umme Kulthum, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, and literary figures such as Nagib Mahfuz, Tawfiq Al Hakim, and actors like uh, Faten uh, Hamama and Rushdi Al Jad. So, when a country goes towards modernism and when there is no discrimination among, among the all classes people, so the country's uh, culture, um, uh, culture's economy uh, that gets enlightened. So that happened at the time of Abdel Nasser in Egyptian theater. So after 25 moments, uh, Egyptian theater, especially the Al-Hakim's theater, got a new shape in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the regime of Nasser. That means, uh, uh, Abdul Nasser. So that happened in uh, in in uh, in uh, Egypt. Okay. So okay. so that was happened. So uh, okay. So a uh, Mamluk Sultan at the height of his power is suddenly faced with the so this is the history of another. Um, uh, we will not be reading that. So we have. Um, by 1960, when the play was published, some of the initial euphoria and the hope endangered by the uh, Nasserist regime itself. We have got the idea of Nasserist regime and given expression of al id al uh, uh, Naima had begun to fade. The Egyptian people found themselves confronting some unsavory realities. The use of the secret police to uh, squelch the public expression of opinion. So after 1966, gradually some secret police uh, started to work. For example, the personality cult surrounding the figure of Golam Abdel Nasser. In such a historical context, Al Hakim's play can be seen as somewhat courageous statement of the need for even the mightiest to adhere to the laws of the land and especially, especially, uh, specifically a plea to the ruling military regime to eschew the use of violence and instead seek legitimacy through the application of the law. So at the end of the Nasser's regime, the political violence increases. Okay. And in that juncture, Al Hakim's play played a very vital role for suppressing the state brutality or cruelty towards the common people for suppression of the opinion of the common people. So, and uh, a two volume of English translation of the collected plays in the UNESCO collection represented works. In, and so this is about um, Al Hakim's biography in short, 
However, there are some uh, pattern of um, Hakim's theater. That is the uh, biographical theater. The group of plays he wrote in his early life in which he expressed his personal experience and attitude towards life were more than 400 plays among which were Alex, the groom before the ticket office. These are the biographical theater. Another type of theater Al Hakim wrote that is intellectual theater. That means produced plays to be read, not acted. Thus, he refused to call them plays, that is, published them in a separate books. Nagi Mahfuz and Tofik Al Hakim in 1982. And there is another thing that is the objective theater he developed. That is the third category of theater developed by Tofik Al Hakim. Its aim is to contribute to the Egyptian society by fixing some values of the society, exposing the realities of Egyptian life. So the uh, drama we are going to read, that is the fate of a cockroach, it, it, it is relating to the third category of Tawfiq al-Hakim's style, that is the objective theater that is involved in fixing some social values and the norms of Egyptian society. and. This is based on the real social atmosphere of the society uh, at the time of Tawfiq al-Hakim. And uh, there are some other plays, okay? uh, you, you will be reading this. I am not reading all this. Uh, at the last end, so the, this is 1962, he wrote another play, The Deal, 1956. The Tree Clumber, 1963, and The Fate of the Cockroach, he wrote in 1966. Al Hakim continued to write play during 1960s, and among the most popular of which were uh, Masir, uh, Masir Sharshar. So, Masi might be the Arabic word, is it? So, Masir Sharshar. That is the fate of a cockroach, and that was uh, published in 19. 66 and Bank of Kalak in Anxiety Bank 1967. So this is and uh, uh, Tawfiq al Hakam is one of the major pioneer figure in modern Arabic literature. In the particular realm of theater, he fulfills an overarching role as the sole founder of an entire, uh, entire literary tradition as Taha Hossein late had earlier made clear. His struggle on behalf of Arabic drama as a literary genre, its technique, its language, are coterminous uh, 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 with the achievement of central role in contemporary Egyptian political and social life. And Hakim's 1956 play Death Song was the basis of the liberto of uh, Muhammad Fairuz in 2008 opera Sumeda's song. Okay, so Tawfiq al Hakim was uh, a pioneering person of Egyptian theater. Its language said by Tawfiq al Hakim and the entire history of uh, Egyptian theater uh, established by uh, Tawfiq al Hakim. So, uh, Tawfiq al Hakim, if we see the personal life, Tawfiq al Hakim viewed as something of a misogynist okay, in his younger years. So, in his early age, he was a, a misogynist. And having written a few misogynistic articles and remaining a bachelor for an unusually long period of time. So, in his early stage of time, this uh, writer Tawfiq al Hakim was a misogynist and for this reason he didn't marry for a long period in his early stage of life. He was given the lakab meaning enemy of women. So title epitaph okay that means the enemy of women. However he eventually married and had two children a son a daughter and his Wife died in 1977. His son died in 
eight in a car accident and he died in 23rd July 1987. So this is in short the biography of the writer, our writer we are going to read. He is an Egyptian writer. He played a vital role in transforming Arabic theater in a good shape. And not only that, at the time of Nasser's regime, uh, Tawfiq al-Hakim's drama turned towards the philosophical and social aspects. That was the theme. And this, um, at the very early stage, Tawfiq al-Hakim was a misogynist. However, in the next part of his life, he married and he had a son and a daughter. And he died in 1987. This is the biography of Tawfiq al-Hakim in uh, short, not in short, in details we have used already uh, 51 minutes. Okay, so we have some minutes left. In the next part, we will be trying to have a look of the drama that is written by. Do you have any question regarding the uh, these aspects? That means, uh, what happened? Do you have any questions? No, sir. Have you understood a little bit? Yes, sir. Bucha sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Amra Kobi Shonkepe Jodi Amra Bulli, Banglai, Jetofi Kayam, an Egyptian writer. Tini Arabic drama, the tradition, Shetatori Kurichilen. এবং শুধু তাই না বিশেষ করে আরব বিশ্ব যে মডার্নিজমের ছোঁয়া পেয়েছিল এট দা টাইম অফ গোলাম আব্দুল নাসের সেই সময়ে সমাজের যে রিয়েলিটি এবং বাস্তবতা সেগুলো নিয়েই তৌফিক আল হাকিম তার নাটক রচনা করেছিলেন এবং শেষের দিকে এসে নাসের রিজেমের শেষের দিকে এসে যখন সমাজের মধ্যে অনেক জিনিস Jishti gochor hoi manusher, she shomoi, tofikal hakim, she guluke, that drama modho di tule dhurechen, manusher kache. So Amaraji dramata porbu, the fate of a cockroach is not an exception. You will see some social realities that happened at the time of tofikal hakim's time, that means in the 20th century. Okay. So uh, can you see the slide? 